So um, I'm originally from Connecticut, and um, I studied at Yale, and then I got my MFA at a place called the American University in Washington, D.C. Um, and then I moved back to New England, and I was uh, teaching on and off, and didn't really sort of put things into high drive until about six or seven years ago. Um, got a little bit more focused about my work, and things really, I think, started to take off and change in ways that were more interesting to me, too. Um, and I moved to New York about a year and a half ago. So um, the recent work started from a series of collages that I did. I was teaching out in California, and at the end of the day, I would go back to this little house I had, and I was exhausted, but I still had a little bit of energy, and I had this book of postcards of Hudson River landscapes, and I had all these old monographs from like the Prado and the Uffizi, and I just started cutting out some of the figures and some of the trees and rocks and sticking them in the landscape. And so I've actually been doing this probably for three years now. And part of what I wanted to do was reconfigure a situation that still kind of felt like a picture that you could enter into. Okay. Like a traditional space, right? Sure. But, you know, different things were taking over, like juxtaposing things and kind of design element to what was going on and overlapping and layering. And then I started um, working with some reference shots and then some things from memory, taking particular situations or scenarios and bringing together a bunch of elements and trying to incorporate them into something where I was generating the imagery instead of cutting it out of an old catalog. So it started with a painting that I did of the valley where I was teaching out in California, which was in the high desert. Mm -hmm. um, and these are some more recent ones. This is up in Massachusetts, in Western Massachusetts, um, I have a house with some friends. And mm -hmm. so it's, you know, it's semi-rural, but not very, very rural. Um, and I'm working on a few others right now. One is from um, Provincetown, Massachusetts, where I was part of the summer, Macmillan Wharf, which is the big wharf that you take to catch the ferry sure. out to Boston. Sure. Sure. I'm doing one in Vermont. Um, and I have a few other ideas in my head. I have one of um, the view outside on the terrace where I'm living right now um, in New York, there's a pretty good view of Southern Manhattan. So mm -hmm. that's another one that I'm going to start on. So I, I find it fascinating that, uh, you know, that you mentioned uh, uh, about the, the collage, you know, cutting and putting on top of another, kind of a transforming yeah. what is in front of your eyes. It reminds me what you just said when you were in the desert, that you say, well, I need a truck, I need something to yeah. grab on. Yeah. And in that sense, what you're doing uh, in a different way is pretty much the same thing. Yes. Which is, you, you're doing a collage of memories, yes. fragments of memories, that, and then you create your own image, your own interpretation of that, which in some way is a sort of abstraction. Yes. That you, and then you're composing something else. That's a very interesting, good, yeah. Yeah, I would say the one thing that I think is happening in these paintings that I wasn't quite expecting, but I think it's just because of who I am, is that sometimes when you collage things together, it starts to get more and more flat. Or right. it start, and right. I kind of, I still need the space. Like, I still need, even when I was collaging these, it still needed to be a space. It still needed, and there's limitations, right? Like, right. there's always, <laughs> you always have to get in somehow, and there's always the Scott, you know what I mean? Like, it's yeah. conventional, yeah. Yeah. but... I, yeah, I'm still holding on to that for now. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, Keanu Scudo is, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. is a great solution for yeah. you know, yeah. dealing with space. Yeah, and I see that you are doing that with colors, yeah. which is uh, very interesting. Uh, you know, one, one of the things that fascinates me is to talk to a young artist and see, you know, how their ideas are emerging yeah. and how their, you know, their thoughts and like you're putting a broken architectural shapes and clouds and, yeah. and, and in some way they kind of uh, create your its own universe. It's, yeah. it's, really, it's really beautiful. Um, I found your studios uh, through a listing and I came right away and Antonio showed me the studio and I, I, I just needed a space and it just seemed like it was right. So I called him back in two hours and I said, I want it. Wonderful. He also, he also said, you need to call me back very quickly <laughs> because <laughs> these go quickly. And so I knew. I knew that I needed to act fast, and I did. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And um, I've been very fortunate. Um, I think the space is really great. It's really served my purposes. You know, it's, it's nice to be able to come into a place that's so conveniently located uh -huh. Uh -huh. and really just sort of have the, the time 
And, you know, things set up so well. That was the other thing that impressed me when I first came in. Cool. It reminded me a lot of the graduate studios that I saw when I was an undergraduate, okay. where they'd have the studios and a wood shop and a big space, like a crit space. And it seemed like you guys had really thought about creating not just a place for people to work, but also to have access to the things they needed to synergize all of that. Cool. And I also totally appreciated that when I came in, Antonio wanted to see my website, which I was a little surprised. But then I realized that you guys were really serious about wanting committed artists in here because I've been in other spaces where, you know, my next door neighbor is doing telecommunications. Or, do you know what I mean? <laughs> which is not bad. I mean, they're quiet neighbors, but it was nice to know that you were really screening to find people that were going to be working on their own yeah. work. So yeah. that was it, great. It's interesting that you point that out because uh, uh, I just came back from the office and we have a situation just like that. An artist, well, is, uh, is an artisan, is doing very interesting work, but it doesn't fit quite what we do. Sure. And he's desperately, he wants to come, come here, yeah. you know, and the, hey, the same thing comes back to my mind. They say, okay, I am an artist. Yeah. I have my studio. Yeah. How would I like to see that person on the other side? Would that help me yeah. or do it distract me? So I asked the same question because what I, when I did this, I did for myself. I said, <laughs> you know, if that works for me, I'm very picky, mm -hmm. but if that works for me, it's going to help, you know, yeah. I'm going to work for many other artists. But now, let's hear about uh, uh, your work, uh, sure. Justin. I would say the thing about my work is that I feel like I have one foot in the traditional world and one foot in kind of the contemporary world, and here's how I'll explain that. The traditional world is because I, I'm still kind of rooted in this idea that I'm the subject and I'm kind of in one place and that's how I experience the world. Mm -hmm. But even though I'm that one subject, everything that I experience is constantly shifting. It's not static. So I look at something and it feels solid. And I look at another thing and all I see is the pattern. And I look at another thing and the color just jumps out at me. And I think that what I'm trying to do is bring that all together in a way that holds together, but at the same time shows how kind of crazy it is. Do you know what I mean? It's complicated. It's complicated even just to sort of go out into the world, especially in the city, and be bombarded by all of these things. And I guess what I'm trying to do is just bring all that together. That's what I would say about my work. It's interesting because it, it, you know, when you listen to this uh, uh, theory of a parallel world, mm -hmm. you know, and the whole concept that what, when you look at an object, you know, it no longer exists. Yeah. You know, and, and it kind of, we're leaving this right now. Yeah. You know, because everything's like virtual. You said, yeah. Exactly. Like you look at something, it's no longer there. It's yeah. gone, and sometimes it's gone forever. Yeah. You know, and all that's left is a memory, yeah. and is exactly what you're doing, the fragmentation of that. It's really beautiful. Yeah, and trying to push it, this is the other thing, trying to push it as far as possible. The, the last painting I did, there was this big mountain in the background, and there were all these contours. And I did it almost like a dotted line for the topographical map, because in my mind, that's how I think about it, even though that's not how it looks. So uh -huh. yeah, it's bringing virtuality, schematics, maps, you know, traces of what was there before, everything. I'm just going to uh -huh. see how far I can go before it totally falls apart. Oh, you will. You will. <laughs> OK, here, here to our viewers. Here's Justin. Yes. You heard a little bit about him. Now, dig in more, search. Look at his images, Google his name, and if possible, come to his studio and yeah. visit. Send him a message, and thank you very much for looking at us. Thank you.